Okay, so some of you are just starting to think about getting your first EV and probably taking advantage of that tax credit before it goes away. Well, good news is that I have owned my EV, this 2018 Tesla Model 3, for the last seven years. And I wanted to come on here and make a video for you on what it's like owning an EV. We're gonna break today's video down into four sections. Number one is the cost of the vehicle. Number two is gonna be the cost of maintenance slash brake fix. And number three is range and anxiety with that range. And lastly is charging. So let's get into it. Okay, first let's talk about the cost of vehicle. Now the cost of the vehicle is dependent on the user, you, on what you're looking for and what you need. Luckily in today's day and age in 2025, you can find electric vehicles from 35K going all the way up to $250,000. Just depends on what you're looking for. You want something smaller, uh, something more compact, you can get that. You want a truck? you can get that. Or you want an SUV, a midsize, you can get that. And if you want a three row, huge SUV, you can get that. And then if you want something that you can take to the track and beat everybody, you can get that. Just depends on how much you want to spend, but know that there is an entire range of vehicles, electric vehicles in all those price categories that you can get. So find what's right for you. But I will say that still till today, the best bang for your buck is still being presented by Tesla. They give you the most range, the best value, and at the best price, even in 2025. Now, let's talk about cost of ownership. This is probably the most pressing question that most of you are wondering about. Raj, how much does it cost to own an EV? How much am I gonna spend outside of the cost of purchasing the vehicle. Is it more expensive than a gas powered vehicle? And so after seven years, I wanna to talk to you about what I've spent on maintenance and what I've spent on brake fix. Let me start with brake fix because I've essentially incurred zero cost on brake fix. And what that means is anything that I have needed to reach out to Tesla where they have billed me to fix in my vehicle. Most of any of the issues that I had were resolved within the warranty, within that time frame, and costed me nothing. Outside of that, because I am well outside of my warranty, I haven't had or incurred any other charges um, that I would need. Now, I do have one headlight right now that has slightly dimmed over the other one. I have not created that ticket yet with Tesla, but it's been seven years, 80,000 miles, and this is just now showing up. So. Let me see how much that'll cost, and if I can get it before this video, I'll, I'll flash the, that invoice up on the screen. But outside of that, no cost owed to Tesla. Now, I've of course done a bunch of upgrades and things like that on the vehicle, which you do not have to do. But maintenance-wise, there are a couple things that you're gonna need to know on buying an electric vehicle. Number one, EVs are heavy. And that weight, combined with how fast they are, that instant torque, they take a toll on your tires. So in the seven years that I've owned my electric vehicle, I've probably been through about five tires. Now, most recently, I am using the E-Range EV tires. And because of this weight and this torque, and because you're driving a vehicle that's quieter, you wanna make sure you have tires that are specifically designed for electric vehicles like the ones I'm using right now, E-Range EV, who happens to also be the sponsor of today's video. Now, before we get into the sponsorship, I do want to call out that I've, through all these tires, these have been the ones that have given me the best efficiency on my vehicle, if that means anything. Late last year, I got these E-Range EV tires, and initially I was pretty impressed with their promise. Well, 5,000 miles later, I had my tires rotated and I had the wear checked and I was impressed. Well, now it's been 10,000 miles and I'm road tripping. I'm out here in Muir Woods and enjoying a beautiful drive. And I wanna tell you why I love these tires. So I drove an hour and a half to Muir Woods. We're here right now. And I have to say that entire drive and including any drive over the last 10,000 miles, I've never been worried about range nor efficiency. These tires have a technology called EcoPoint 3. And because of that, it delivers exceptional range and efficiency. I'd have to say 
that my efficiency on my vehicle is noticeably better than any other tire that I've ever used in the past. And that says a lot when it comes to an electric vehicle. Now with electric vehicles, they carry a ton of torque. So you need tires to be able to support that. Thankfully, these E-Range EV tires have an advanced tread pattern, uh, as well as a very unique formulated rubber compound that helps with the dynamics of these vehicles. Not only EVs, but hybrids too. These tires are available in 37 different sizes. That's crazy. But not only that, they carry an amazing warranty. 50,000 miles and 60 months here in the US. So you really can't go wrong and hence why I'm in love with them. I took an amazing, quiet, peaceful drive across Golden Gate Bridge, up here into the mountains, to Muir Woods to enjoy the peace and serenity. And I'd have to say over the last 10,000 miles, I've enjoyed the peace and serenity inside my vehicle, thanks to these tires. I know, call it wild, but they've got this silent tread technology built into the tires with a variable pitch sequence, whatever it is, it's delivered a quiet and comfortable ride, and I really appreciate that in my electric vehicle. So when E-Range EV reached out to me to ask me how the tires have been, I said, they've been great. But then they informed me about a little cherry on top. They've actually partnered with 4Ocean on a pledge that for every tire sold in North America, they're going to remove two pounds of plastic waste out of the ocean. I don't know about you, but I'm an EV owner, but I also care about the environment. That pledge means a lot to me, and I'm sure it means a lot to you. Then not only are you gonna be able to get tires that are gonna be safe, increase your range, improve comfort, and, and all of those amazing benefits, but now you're taking care of our oceans, our environment. And it just goes to show you that really enjoying Mother Nature is amazing, and it's great to do it with companies that help support that cause. So thanks to E-Range EV Tires for sponsoring this video, and if you're interested in getting yourself a set of E-Range EV Tires, check the link down below. You will not be disappointed. Okay, now outside of tires, there are going to be your other normal maintenances. Windshield wiper fluid. You're going to need to do that, and I've probably been through maybe three or four bottles in my entire time. They come at about $5 a bottle. Uh, there's also going to be your uh, cabin air filter that you're going to need to change. I think I've changed that about four times and those can range about $30 to $50 depending on which ones you get and you can get any of these all off of Amazon. You're going to need windshield wipers of course to go along with that fluid. Depending on where you live you might need to replace it more often but here in California I've probably replaced that twice yeah, we don't get a lot of weather out here. There's also the 12 volt battery. Now this is the little battery. It's found in the front area. I've had to replace that one time. Um, it did fail and it did indicate to me on the screen that it was failing and that it should get replaced. And that runs about $120 ish. Um, and you can get that online or get that directly through Tesla um, and you can replace it yourself. It's not super hard, but this is the battery that runs all the accessories of the vehicle, not the big battery that powers the vehicle to go forward, but the battery that controls the windows and the doors and the radio and things of that sort. So that was another expense that I had there. Outside of those expenses and outside of the tires, I did have to replace um, in my wife's Model Y her bushings, and that's because they cracked. Um, it's been known that the Tesla bushings are not really the greatest um, and they cracked. And so to upgrade those um, was about $1,500. And then on top of that, my vehicle as of right now is having a bad upper control arm. Water has gotten in there and it is squeaking like an old person's wheelchair. terrible and super embarrassing. Uh, you don't need to go to Tesla to get these replaced. You can, um, but I'm probably going to go to my local um, car shop, Zev Centric here in Fremont, um, and get a new set of controller arms that are probably by Mountain Pass Performance. So they're better and higher quality. Um, I think it's running about over a about $1,200 as well for that. So uh, those are two things that I've had to do over the course of you know seven years, 80,000 miles, just so you're aware. But that's it as far as maintenance. No oil changes, no brake pads to be changed. All that stuff is good to go, unlike what you would experience 
in a gas powered vehicle. Now next is charging. Many of you are wondering about this. You've never charged a vehicle before. What does charging look like? How terrible is it? Um, where can I charge? Well, there are a couple different options. Now, everything I'm talking about can be applied to any electric vehicle that you're looking at. But in today's day and age in 2025, charging with Tesla's North America charging standard is still by far the best. I never worry about charging because I know that there is a Tesla supercharger not far from where I'm at. Because of that, I ran my battery, not healthy to do, but I ran my battery down to very, very low percentages because I know that everywhere I go, there's a charger nearby. And that's why in 2025, if you're looking for your next EV, you must make sure that it supports the North America charging standard or it will via an adapter. So that way you can leverage Tesla's supercharging network, which is the largest and biggest supercharging network across the, at least the US here. Now, secondly, obviously outside of that, you've got your home charging situations, right? A home charger like the one that I have installed from Tesla uh, costs about $500. You can buy other branded ones that are non-Tesla ones, and you can get those maybe for a little bit cheaper, but expect to spend anywhere from $250 to $500 on a home charger and the running of that high power to that charger. So if your house does not come already pre-wired, you will need to have an electrician run that wiring for you. And depending how long that is, you gotta account for that cost um, for home charging, which is still the most convenient is to wake up every morning with 300 miles or whatever your range is of your vehicle and be able to head out the door. So those are the two. Now, outside of that, of course, you've got uh, hotels that have chargers and, and charge points and I know my work has charging. So there are a lot of charging options, but if you're thinking about road tripping, definitely make sure that your vehicle supports the North America charging standard. But charging is easy. You get there, you plug it in and you're good to go. Put a credit card on file, plug in with another charger, you're good to go. Every day when I come home, I plug in in the morning, I'm good to go. So it's as easy as plugging in your phone at home when you go to sleep. And lastly is range. A lot of you still coming into the electric vehicle market have this range anxiety. You're so used to gas and you're used to the range that gas gives you. Now, is electric up to the range that gas gives you for a full tank? Probably not, but it's not drastically off. On average, most vehicles are giving you around 300 miles of range on a full charge. That combined with a good charging network, you don't have to worry about having a range anxiety because you know I've driven to LA many, many times in both my Model 3 and my wife's Model Y. And that entire time, it's never an issue because there's always a place to stop and charge. But understanding range and how it affects you is very important. So number one with range is always get the most amount of range. Remember, range is king. The reason why is because there are many things that affect range. Number one, how fast you're going. Number two, how you're driving. Number three, the drag on your vehicle. Number four, your AC and heating usage. Uh, and all of that can affect how much range you actually get. Also, it's for the most part not recommended to charge your battery to 100% every single day. So if the vehicle you're buying has a battery range of 310 miles, you're not getting that every day if you're not charging to 100%. It's usually recommended to do 80 to 90%. So think about that, is that you're not getting the full range, you're getting 90% of that range. And then think about whatever you're gonna use, you're gonna get a little bit less than that. So thinking about that will give you an accurate portrayal about how much actual range you're gonna get in the vehicle that you're purchasing. But like I always said, if you can afford it, go with the maximum range that you can get. That way you know that you don't feel guilty later on that you didn't, you could have had more and you didn't get it. Always do that. And nowadays vehicles are giving 300 and plus mile range. Um, and and that, that's pretty good. When I got my vehicle, it was rated at 310 miles. And now seven years later, 80,000 miles, I've supercharged, I've home charged, I've trickle charged, I've done all the different typing type of charging, uh, mostly at home, not supercharging. But I'm getting about my, that same 100% that used to be 310 is now about 280 to 290. And that's called range degradation. 
So over time, as you continue to charge a battery, the battery will lose its 100% state of charge. So as you can see, mine has lost, but it's not that big. So make sure, that's why I always say, go with the max amount of range, because you want to make sure that after the way you're driving, the charging to 90%, the degradation after X amount of years, that you still have the most you can get. So think about all of that as you're going in, looking for your next EV. So hopefully those four points help to paint a better picture for you as you're looking for your next EV. And I hope that you pick the right EV. If you have any other questions, anything that I might have missed, leave them down in the comments below. If you're looking at buying a Tesla, I've put my referral link down below for you to save some coin on that purchase. But other than that, hopefully I help you. Happy electric vehicle shopping. And let me know what you get down in the comments below. See you guys next time. See ya.